Hi. Hi. Hello. Yeah, you've Everybody. also got you've also got this one. You can wave forward as well to the camera. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Yes. Um. So today we have a guest. Where? <laughs> yeah. Where is he? Uh, where is he? Uh, he's late. PJ. Hi, PJ. How's it been? Hi. It's been great. It's been great. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Good. Um. Before I forget. Uh, and as we as we have to always have both sides of the story, oh no. um, it's the story of a young, uh, handsome, and muscular Frenchman. So uh, sci-fi, obviously, um, Frenchman. I was saying, um, who left a nightclub in a hurry at two a.m. without his coat and therefore without his keys, after forty-five minutes walk in Glasgow Siberian cold. Um, he reached his flat and rings, and rings, and rings, uh-huh. and rings. <coughs> uh-huh. <coughs> what happens there, PJ? I was probably asleep, Jan. I have uh, to to to. Uh, I can believe that I slept through that because uh, when I was younger, I s- I uh, babysat for one of my aunts, and in the in the middle of the night it was really stormy, and they have one of those doors which is like basically glass. And I think it blew in in the middle of the night, and I didn't. I slept. Jesus, <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I'm so jealous of that. So it wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't ignoring. <laughs> it's not. Uh, see, it's important because I thought. Uh, I, I thought you said that you. It was because kids have been ringing all night, and then you just ignored it. That's no. what I believed. No. So you no. see, it, it's, it's important to ask. Uh, <laughs> How how uh, things happen. Uh-huh. So um, today is all about um, high fidelity. Yes, starring John Cusack. J- yes, John Cusack. The main man. Jack Black. Jack Black. Lisa Bonet. Joel Carter. Joan Cusack. Sarah Gilbert. Eben Hayelia. I'm glad you pronounced that because I was going to have. Br- <laughs> yeah. Ha- ha- I'm guessing the J is silent, so he, he, yell, I Yella. I believe she's from the Netherlands, I think mm. it is. Yeah, sounds and it was, it was quite interesting how she, she, I think the director was over there and she was in a play or something and she was doing a, the, the director believed that she was American because in the play she plays an American and he thought she was so natural at this and that's how she came <laughs> to get the <laughs> role. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's so many good stories of people <coughs> getting cast via plays that uh-huh. directors have seen. And I can't remember one off the top of my head. <laughs> great, great start there, Adam. It'll come back to me. There is one. I'm just like trying to picture the actor now. Yeah. Oh, well. There's so, yeah. I mean, Jan told me the story of the, the play that, the play that when everything goes wrong, uh, great show, by the way. Me, we, f- we saw the touring one when it came to Glasgow. Um, it got picked up by America because when J.J. Abrams was filming Star Wars The Force Awakens, yeah, he went to London one weekend just to like, oh, I'm just going to see a, a play. Saw that and went, yeah, I'm going to take that to America. So there you go. Great. You never know. You never know. Invite everyone to your plays. That's I always luck. do. <laughs> yeah. We, um, need to go to, we need to go to Ireland and see PJ in a play. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Just Ireland in general is awesome. Yeah. I've never been. It's everyone, <laughs> everyone, awesome. Well, everyone I know always ends up going to like Northern Ireland or just going to Belfast either. So it's either... Anywhere in Northern Ireland or Belfast, and then nobody really goes anywhere else that I know of. Um, yes, but do. probably missing out of some great scenery. Since sure. since Game of Thrones, they've all been going up to Giant's Causeway, and some oh, of the there's actually tours now that go and visit the locations where d- some of the, the yeah. place pieces have been shot. Mm, the, yeah. wall. the wall. Where's the wall? The wall. The wall. The wall is a giant quarry. They like have this. There's a big quarry. I believe it's in Ireland that um, they just like build the sets and do <coughs> uh, stuff <coughs> like that in. So I know, for example, there's a big battle and when they're fighting at, at the the Castle Black that was just built in this massive quarry. Uh-huh. Um, so a lot of that stuff is moved about. But yeah, the uh, most of the northern stuff is filmed in Ireland. There's, sorry, there's one of the I, I seen a thing online where they they took one of the quarries. Uh, I think there's a scene where it's all on a frozen lake. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they basically concreted this lake, wow. or the, sorry, this quarry, and it's just 
that's a, like crazy. <laughs> just for this to do the, those scenes on on that frozen lake. Mm. So it, it's just absolutely concrete, and I mean not like it's not like your backyard. You know, this thing is absolutely massive. So yeah, they done that. But the the other location where they're they filmed is the a place called the Dark Hages, and it has become like a real tourist thing. And they're is that the road? Yeah, uh, it's the road. Yeah, and all King's these uh, trees that come up like that sort of. Open yeah, yeah. But they're trying to stop the traffic coming down to, you know, going through it because what's happening is all the hate, all the verges, are all get worn away, and it's digging into yeah, all the roots or all the trees, you know, which will obviously then mean they'll get weakened and so on. Mm. But the tourists you just keep coming down and driving. I mean, yeah. I mean that's one of the biggest losses in the Ireland's gain is that because it could have been Scotland, but apparently the um, the tourism, the whole permit of filming in Scotland was just too complicated, so they went to Ireland. Sure. Yeah. Too much I mean, red tape. You know, it's you for, you for, you forget about that. That's the, because a lot of the northern stuff would absolutely work up here, and you always think uh-huh. like, oh, mountains, Scotland, but they're like it's too difficult. We'll just film in Ireland. Well, if somebody, if, if somewhere wants it, wants a production, and it always, it's again, look at the tourism boost. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. That show. Um, yeah. And even after the show finishes, people are still going to go because that's how big it is. Yeah. So we were in uh, Dubrovnik um, in Croatia. Um, last year? No, um, after the Fringe, so 2016. Oh, two yeah. years ago. Two years well ago. Well, we all met. <laughs> um, and, it's yeah, the tourism is just crazy over there because mm. it's just, like, everything's, uh, like especially around the wall. Yeah. Um, keep the gun like that. Oh, is it, is it changing? Uh, just a wee bit, but it's not that bad. Okay. Um, so, like, the wall itself is, like, when you look... You, you, it's a basically Dubrovnik. This old old town of Dubrovnik is like an ancient, not ancient, well, medieval fort. So uh-huh. kind of. So it's got these like, massive medieval like stone walls that you can walk around the top, and all these like porcelain tiled roofs. It's it's, it's incredible. Um, and that that place has done so well because then last year for Star Wars, there's the city. One of the cities is again used as Dubrovnik. So it's like that place has got it locked down. Uh, the amount of stuff that's either Game of Thrones based that will be Star Wars based soon. For example, they sail like this giant boat, which is like a galleon sort of thing from port to port. So there's one port in the old town, and then there's the the newer port, which is like for all these massive cruise liners. Because obviously, in itself, Dubrovnik's a great, like a great naval sort of city. It's very like you know these ancient wonders or medieval wonders are always fantastic to look at because they're just so starkly different. So it would already always get the cruise liners coming in, stop, bust you there, bust you back. But now with Game of Thrones and everything, I mean, that place is just blowing up as in like as a tourist location. And the prices are just like <laughs> going ridiculous really, really. because they know that tourists are just going to pay it. So you like walk a little bit outside the square and it's so much cheaper. And yeah, yeah. You walk like five steps and immediately it's like, oh, yes, yeah, 25 <laughs> pounds for a bottle of water <laughs> 25 <laughs> kunas man yeah it's funny that we yeah. came to game of thrones because we talked about how in uh, the jumanji episode i think how sometimes marketing uh, marketing team uh, lies mm. and uh, but we talked about that they they will tell you it's because the story was but that's just bullshit <laughs> um sometimes uh, for game of Mumbo thrones jumbo. yeah yeah for, for uh, game of thrones they lied well they they uh, sometimes they lied, sometimes they kept it about the Jon Snow thingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even more blatant, lies. yeah, even cool. more even more blatant, uh, I, d- I just noticed a few days ago, Thor Ragnarok, the last scene when he's on the bridge, uh, the marketing material had him with both of his eyes. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, many, many a video game has done that as well. I'm uh, sure that means something to people who have watched that, <laughs> that program. But having not seen it, that means absolutely <laughs> nothing to Let me. Let me see. During, during the e- Thor loses an eye uh, at some point, and at the end, uh, in the marketing material, the yes. scene, uh, well, he still had his okay. eye, which, yeah, and in the, in, the, in the final movie, he had the, the I mean, I remember people being annoyed when the original Incredibles trailer came out, and it's like him trying to get the belt on. And that wasn't in the movie. And I'm like, oh, I wish that was in the movie. But obviously, it was. A tr- <laughs> you remember that? Great. 
That's a good scene. That's a lovely scene. Like, I'll I could have done that scene. I'll be right. <laughs> Mr. Incredible, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm so excited for that new film. It's going to be great. Um, so usually we, we have films selected and then we see if we can, well, shoehorn guests in that. But, <laughs> but um, even better uh, when we actually have the idea to actually ask the guest um, if there was a film that meant something to them to come and talk about it. So what, what was, uh, why High Fidelity? Because why High Fidelity? Well, it's, it's just an awesome movie. I just love it. I just, I think it, it the it gets to the geek in me. I mean, like mm. I, I'm, I'm a collect. I collect vinyl as it's now known. I mean, it was just music to us, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's it's all like hip and trendy now. But uh, like I've just always loved music, and I could just sort of see so much of myself in that junk. <laughs> it's like, or, you know, and his uh, and his. I mean, like that old scene where he's he's sitting there and goes through all the records. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I've done that so many times. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and make, making, I mean, all, all those things like making mixtapes and uh, about the thing of thinking about how glamorous it would be to work in a, in a record shop, you know, and uh, all those other things it brings out about the sort of snobbery and music <laughs> and people that, <laughs> but, you know, different things like that. I just, mm. there's so many things that I could just can relate to in it, you know. Uh, I think that's. Uh, I mean, when I was thinking about it, I mean, there's there's so uh, there's so many other films as well that I could equally have um, <coughs> have chosen. Like uh, a lot of people maybe haven't seen it, but Pink Floyd, The Wall. Mm. You you look at that there, and yeah. I think it's a combination between the sort of narrative of the of the story and how it, it's basically the, the songs are basically telling the story. Yeah, in a yeah. way, you know, so that's that. What's what makes it, you know, special? Well, to think that all originated with um, <coughs> all night was it all a long day's night, the the Beatles one. Hard days. Hard days night. Sorry. Really. A long day's night is the the play. It's a Eugene yeah. O'Neill. It's a play. Eugene O'Neill play. Long days. Something Journey. into night. Journey, Journey into night. Journey into night. Yeah. yeah. The whole idea of being able being able to make a movie because so many people want to see you and can't get tickets will make a movie where your songs are in it so that everyone can see it and see it multiple times. Really? Yeah, that's I one of the big reasons. If uh, we're going to talk about it in like a cu- upcoming months, probably the month this comes out, but the the Ron Howard documentary uh, Eight Days a Week, which focuses on um the the, me- the big American tour the Beatles did, uh, like Shea Stadium and. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the one down in Fl- Florida with the the first time with non segregated crowds it's a it's a fantastic documentary and it goes in from basically them starting with um, Ringo to the end of the tour uh, and it covers everything so that in in the time that they made they did the tour the movies came out so they did two um, but yeah and the f- the first one was made because they're like people can't see them let's they came up with the idea let's make a movie around the beatles and the funny thing was the movie wasn't just like the shoehorning songs and there was like a narrative to it as well which was <laughs> nice in the same way it's a good it's a re- it's a pretty interesting movie to watch for um time's sake to see like god these young people because everyone nowadays you just think of um especially paul mccartney as um you know wings and all that <laughs> um but it's nice to s- it's it's so <laughs> Almost refreshing in a way to see like these young Ed Sullivan show based performers. It's it's a good movie. I like yeah. it. Mm, so so this film High Fidelity they is based on a book written by uh, Nick Hornby, mm. That's right. who wrote yeah. an education. He the script the script for education. He also wrote About a Boy, which is About again another great oh, movie. Yeah, yeah. Equally, equally, and a series. Good, yeah. yeah, that's um, oh yeah. Most a lot of the stuff in that was. Um, the man, what do you call him? Who I've just been to see like earlier this month and I can't <laughs> remember his name. Oh dear. Um, who sang about a boy? Uh oh. Who won? The song. The song about a boy. I don't know. Uh, badly, ba- badly drawn boy. Of course it is. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> of course it is. Right, the, right, right. the names and the clues and the, oh, and the song. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like most, I think there's quite a few of his songs featured in that movie. Mm. You know, he done a lot of the music, so, and it's yeah, it's really well well paced on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. directed by Stephen Frears. 
<laughs> who directed Les Liaisons Dangereuses with uh, not yeah. with our favorite tactician, uh, the one with John Malkovich? Dominic West. No, I don't. Yeah, I looked when I looked. I'm like, oh yeah, Dangerous Liaisons. Yeah. It's better when Jan says it, obviously. Yes. Um, far, far better. Uh, say it again. <laughs> Les Liaisons Dangereuses. Oh. Oh. No, uh, We're all uh, in love with you, yeah. God, <laughs> if you ever want to hear Butter Mel, that's that's the pers- the. S- not the personification of butter melting, but there you go. Just a little bit. Is it a pers- <laughs> is it is that a personification or is it just like it wouldn't be because personification is when you give it to an object, like like right. the sound of butter melting. I don't know. Either way, <laughs> it sounds like that's what if butter had a sound melting, that's what it would be. Synonym sounds something that sounds like something is called a, is a synonym. I'm I've totally made that uh, up. No, no that's no, onomatopoeia. No, that's no, onomatopoeia. No, it's is um, like um, a word sounds like what it's describing. Yeah, like bang is an onomatopoeia. Yeah, that's but if one. you're saying it sounds like this, that's that is uh, a is that simile? Simile is a, is a phrase with as and like. Uh, um, we're gonna have either to way, this isn't an, this isn't an English podcast. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> th- 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 that would be interesting having Jan on as well. There was a some music that was actually composed for this uh, by Howard Shore. Oh, really? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I check the credits every time, and that, yeah, okay. it's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, me and Anouk watched this via uh, rented it via Amazon, and Amazon's uh, thing is a great thing where if you just move the mouse. X-ray. Uh, X-ray. So if you move the mouse at any point, it'll tell you the actors in the scene. Bit of trivia. But more importantly for this yeah. film, it tells you the song that's playing. Song. So it'll come up yeah. with song, artist, yeah. album. I'm like, right. You don't have to work very hard these days, do you? To no, find it, it's things. great. <laughs> like, oh, I don't know what that is. Yes. One second, right, let me second. find out. I feel sorry for Shazam. <laughs> you know the app? The Shazam was that app where you, s- you played a song and it listened to it. And it's like, right, this is what that is. But it's now it's just like up oh, straight away. Yeah, yeah. But there's also sound, uh, not SoundCloud, but sound something, which works with you singing. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, because the, yeah, Shazam detects actual um, uh, sound. That's, like that's yeah, assen- actual music. Yeah. But that, yeah, that's essentially come from people going, "Oh, what's that song?" It was like, "Na na 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 na." But then uh, yeah. it wouldn't. Sometimes it would never guess it because no, the it single would be so yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a synonym. You were right. Well uh, done. Synonym. A synonym is the um, different ways to, like a synonym is like a um, a car or a. Mm, that's good. It's a quite vehicle. interesting. A vehicle, because it's that's. I think that's kind of the words different, but means kind of the same thing, but a bit different. Something like this. That's a synonym. Is that the sound of? No, that that's Adam's thingy, so it doesn't work. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, I was pleased to see two people in there, uh, which are not top billing at all: Tim Robbins and Catherine Ditcher Jones. I said to Nick, I was like, "When was the last time you saw Catherine Zeta Jones?" Yeah. And 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 a young. A young yeah. Catherine Zeta Jones. Yeah. She was very, very sexy good. in this film. Yeah. yeah. Got uh, yeah, it's just that the uh, the scene where she's standing putting on the t-shirt and then y- and you look at and the, the thing that caught me is like obviously whoever's doing the art on this here like it had to be a pretender's t-shirt <laughs> and i just thought oh well, <laughs> you know that's yeah. some of the connotations <laughs> really? you know, yeah i didn't yeah. cock that yeah yeah, yeah. that's hilarious because you know, it's it's all i mean all the music is so well placed you know for mm. its, for its time and uh, you know, when he's come back, talking about the different girlfriends, you know, like the first one is uh, like, bye, why, why, I want candy, you know, like. <laughs> um, I must say, though, that I have kind of a bias on something. Every every th- movie or anything with narration gets on my nerves very quickly. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so I uh, I was focused on that from half of the movie. <laughs> the framing device, yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I... Um, it's not entirely related, but um, I really like the. Um, have you ever seen the the series <laughs> Eli Stone? No. Uh, because it, so there was a cameo from Bruce, Spix- Bruce Springsteen in that, right? Okay. And that reminded me of. Uh, so it's basically John Lee Miller, who is a guy who gets visions, and the visions are of uh, George Michael dancing <laughs> on his kitchen uh, table. Okay. Yeah. 
and it becomes kind of just it was like weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's weird, weird, weird. That's terrifying. <laughs> Man, George Michael. Oh, uh-huh. by the way, Bruce, Spring t- Bruce Spring Springsteen, I'm going to <laughs> succeed in. Bruce g- Springsteen. Are we, are we I, Bruce? I almost wanted to say R.I.P. George Michael. He is gone, isn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was, go- yes. I was like, he is, isn't he? I'm like, yeah. Not, Why? Uh, yeah. not Bruce Springsteen, but uh, just been awarded the special Tony Award because they announced the Tony's like a few days ago. And uh, for his uh, Springsteen on Broadway show, he's going to right. Be okay. Yeah, yeah, a special award. My my mum and dad <coughs> went to see Bruce Springsteen in Germany. They used the excuse of like, oh, we're gonna go and see Bruce Springsteen. Why don't we go and see it like in a different place? So they went to see it in the like the Berlin Olympic Stadium, right? And if anyone's seen Bruce Springsteen, they know that you get your money's worth because the guy just plays and all plays. the. There's a point in his set where he just goes, right? What do you want here? Like they'll play, they'll play that night set, and he'll go right, take request, and then like Bruce Springsteen's <laughs> taking request. He'll be like, oh. Oh. so the the famous one is in, I think it was London. It was the definitely the England in itself is when they just turned off the power. They like, <laughs> they turned it off. And he was playing so long. They're like, nope, and turned it off. I think that was a four hour set. Time is money, my friend. No, not just that. It's just that and like, oh, we're gonna get noise complaints and all that sort of shit. Oh, uh, yes, of course. Anything after half 11 is not allowed. I think that was in Naples. I was around, but I was doing something else. We It was on the actual square, uh, so we actually went on until it just couldn't speak anymore. <laughs> he just that, couldn't yeah. speak. Could, yeah, for he, three, four hours or something. He's a else. crazy yeah. performer. He just performs and performs and performs. It's amazing. amazing, yeah. It's really cool, really as cool. As opposed to all these young whippersnappers who only play like for an hour and a half and think they're getting... Yeah, <laughs> they're you're, you're right. Actually, yeah. That's a really good, s- s- not a segue, but like connection to... Uh, did you see the video of Kanye West? He did like two songs and halfway through his th- s- third song went on a massive rant about his like friends. He went on a rant about... The, was the it was industry it yeah the in the industry and Beyonce and Jay Z but yeah. the thing was as well he turned up ninety minutes late for his own concert right as well and only played two songs then like a minute into the third stops has this rant and then walks off and leaves like mic everyone drop got and then walks off everyone got refunded right I should think so too there was another one it, yes. like he he just decided like not to perform like two hours before. The, per- the performance and I haven't seen the photo but I've d- described to me as it's like this just a sign outside the stadium saying basically saying he's not playing this show is cancelled instead of yeah. <laughs> instead of like <laughs> sending everyone an email it's just a sign saying show's not on tonight you'd be pissed because gig tickets are not cheap yes. I mean yeah. the yeah. biggest the biggest one right now is Arctic Monkeys which an Arctic Monkeys ticket is about 75 quid right now yeah. and all old f- old school Art and Monkey fans are like, this is outrageous. Because my favorite one is somebody posting tickets for they had an, a previous Arctic Monkeys tour, which the ticket was 35 quid. Uh-huh. And they're also like, you know, it's always the case with musicians. As soon as they have like a really, they come back and do a successful album. For example, Art and Monkey's latest one was AM, right? And all the all the classic stuff we know, like uh, for, le- for Lessons... What's that song called? Like an adolescent, I think. It's adolescent, adolescent. <laughs> adolescent, adolescent. That's it. And all these other ones, um, sit down. I've moved because I moved. You, don't sit down because I moved your chair. All these great tunes that are previous. They're like we know these songs because we grew up with these. But the, all the people that are buying these tickets only know stuff like "Snap Out of It" and um, was it? Don't know. Was it? Um, Why'd you only call me when you're high? Snap yeah. out yeah. of. I I've pr- I've I've <laughs> done th- I've done that live. That one. It's great. Um, but okay. I, I don't mind like I, I like when I go to a concert. I don't mind where the fans have begun to lend. Yeah, of course. Artists, whether they're you know decades old or whether they've just recently got into them, I I find you know I'm I, I'm I actually like people to you know to discover mm. old acts and new acts and whatever. But um, I think the etiquette at concerts is just uh, just galls me. I, I don't know mm, where it's yeah, getting the older no. stuff. I was recently at Brian Brian Ferry in the marathon. Right, yeah, yeah. Seated thing, really looking forward to it. And two women beside me, like yatter <laughs> the whole way through. And I'm thinking, hold on a minute, I paid 
you know, to come and say, I didn't pay here to come yeah, and listen. No, I know. And it's not that it's not that the music it's not that I couldn't hear the music. It was just that this was drowning all beside me. Yeah, and, yeah, of course. And I, I knew if I had to start to say something, I wouldn't end it nicely. But I think somebody behind them did actually speak to them. But that was okay for like maybe ten minutes, and then they maybe st- <laughs> they, they weren't as bad after that. But they were still. I, yeah, I'll probably get into it more in the in other episodes where my mates are on. But my dad is a major reason I'm into music and play guitar and sing and all that sort of stuff. Um, the two major concerts my dad took me to were I remember bunking off the end of school in like S two, so about thirteen, fourteen, to go to ACDC, right at Hamden, and it was a uh, it was b- the the not the last I think it was the last album they put out, uh, but a uh, Black Ice I think it was. Um, so we went to that, and I remember sitting down in the seat, like in the stands, and the, there's a guy next to me, probably about your age, PJ. Um, okay. Twenty five. No, no offense, no, but like, no, 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 you know, like the, <laughs> yes, the, the I, generation. I know. That, yeah, I know. Yeah, my mean, dad's age as well. And he's just like, have you ever seen these guys before? I'm like, no, I've not. I'm like, this is what kind of one of my first concerts. Like, oh, you're in for a treat. And I also remember my dad taking me to um, Wishbone Ash as well, actually, um, which are really good. I really like Wishbone Ash, but um, the the kind of the questions you get asked by the, the older generation going, oh, you're into this. And there's like a real excitement to it. Like, I can't believe that, the, that somebody, I, another generation has found this. So there is a, yeah, there's an appreciation. There is a yeah. real nice um, communal sense to when you discover music. But I agree that, especially nowadays, concerts have definitely changed. I mean, the event, the, the ability to film a concert is like, <sighs> what are you doing? Enjoy the concert. Be there. Be in the moment. It is horrible. <laughs> And you yeah. even have artists asking for people to take their phones out. Yeah. And it's just like, why would you want? That's such a strange thing to want. Because then it's like, you can just watch it like this. Yeah. Yeah. They they want them to take them take the phones out. Yeah, well, you know, it used to be light on. Also the light. Yeah, yeah. But it's like, yeah. why, why would you? Because uh, after you do that, it's just the phones are out. And it yeah. just becomes yeah. a bit kind of, yeah. just bring a flashlight. <laughs> I mean, you, you, watch, you watch like... <laughs> Say festival covers like Glastonbury or t- well, it used to be Tea in the Park, R.I.P. Tea in the Park, um, <laughs> of like it'll go like the swooping shots of the the, the audience, and you'll always get one person to like texting away like that. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Watch the bloody concert. It's not that you're listening to your iPod here. Yeah. Come on. I think the worst one is people chucking drinks like over the crowd. Oh, I feel like Philip Pesh as well. <laughs> well, there's that too. Yeah. But yeah. So, yeah, really yeah. bad. Um, I heard something, so, th- so you know, there's the phrase that we hear a lot these days, uh, but it's, I don't know, bec- maybe it's because English is not my mother tongue, but that we hear in that movie who was released uh, 18 years ago, uh, which was, um, I really dig how she walks around. I thought dig was a more recent thing. Is that, no? Is that re- uh, I keep hearing it. No? No? It's no, so an old time thing. It's been around long, long, long. Okay, long well it's just that I hate the phrase then. Because <laughs> 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 digging is when you dig uh, with a work. shovel. Yes. If you keep saying that phrase, I'm going to dig you a hole. <laughs> sort of thing, yeah. Oh uh, my God. Uh, when, when the protagonist was talking about his dream jobs, did you notice, Anouk, that uh, it would be a film director except. Um, German or silent? Yes, I heard that. <laughs> I was like, that's hilarious. And I was wondering why French wasn't in it because usually they people like lump those together, like European uh-huh. and silent <coughs> films. If you watch any of those two things, you are a wanker immediately. <laughs> <laughs> and and there also be a kind of uh, any kind of musician besides classical and rap. I don't was yeah I like classical but I just don't understand anything in it and I hate rap <laughs> personally <laughs> so that's, well I call it that noise anyway or uh, just recitation <laughs> like you're talking anyway so you're doing that with your life all the time anyway so <laughs> there's a lot of passionate yeah. uh, feelings towards Jan's, the Jan's well. now going to drop the mic and walk <laughs> off and the stream is going to end <laughs> um, uh. I haven't seen Evil Dead two yet. yet. <laughs> That's gold. There. I was just like, yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice the the screw up in that scene though? No. As an Evil Dead fan, Jan. Uh, oh, I think I did. I think I I didn't uh, note it down, but I think I noticed something weird. So Jack Black describes the wrong film. He's like, yeah, Evil Dead Two. It's crazy. They've got like fourteenth, fourteenth century, and all this like cool shit. It's like, nope, that's the plot to Evil Dead Three: Army of Darkness. <gasps> he describes the wrong film. Spoiler alert. 
<laughs> yeah, I heard that, but I think in the second, isn't there in the second? No, that yeah, yeah, I, I am. Um, I, he I heard. Yeah, right, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't necessarily connect, but yeah, yeah, I actually. Uh, when Do you said think that's <coughs> a joke? No, it's th it's that'll just be the wrong film. I, f I I don't know. I just feel like with so many of the other um, connections to music and f and film and stuff, they they wouldn't make that mistake. Who knows? So maybe they're just trying to catch you out, but maybe, maybe. Uh, also, the cool moment when uh, Ray, Ian, or whatever the fuck his name <laughs> is, uh, the different <laughs> options to the <laughs> question. Uh, shall we leave it at that then? Uh, yes. <laughs> I think the best one is when uh, <laughs> the assistant just takes the telephone, and just rap. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. I, li I like when um, he trips <laughs> over the skateboard or something and what does he call the the kids he's like maggots <laughs> i was like who who never says that it's brilliant it was just you like, maggots, maggots. <laughs> like, it was so great it was just the tiniest little scene where i was like that's that's great <laughs> there was also a moment who, which reminded me of quantum leap bizarrely uh, we have nine percent chance of getting back together <laughs> Okay. okay, that's that's quite small. Yeah, <laughs> but nine percent still. Nine, still nine percent. It's specific as well. Yeah. She didn't think yeah. about it. She was like nine percent. I'm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to be fair, I'm like this is a movie. There's a hundred percent chance they're getting back together. It's a, it's a romantic comedy. Of yes. course, they're going to be back <laughs> together by the end. I think I'm kind of jaded because me, the last romantic comedy me and Nick saw was when Harry met Sally. <laughs> which is exceptionally yes. good. It's it's just so unbelievably good. how good that film is. Yeah. So good. Kind of redefined the romantic comedy genre for a good while anyway. Right. Yeah. I um it really reminded me of like a Woody Allen film. Um but like like a good one. <laughs> like <laughs> um, I'm I'm glad you specified. <laughs> Yeah, Woody Allen, man. I, I just felt the silence after I said the that. Dart I like, of, mm -hmm. The dartboard of... The dartboard of... It doesn't have to be a bad thing, but there are just like, you know, with the fourth wall breaking and the narration and the fact that it's all like oh, cerebral and angsty and like there's all this shit happening and it's like stop overthinking everything. <laughs> like there's so much stuff that everything is so shit. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, that's just the way that he thinks and it's just really sad <laughs> um i so uh, weird relation weird thing happened to me while i was watching it i kind of hated it the film and then as soon as i finished it i was like i really enjoyed that film <laughs> it was really yeah. weird it was like everything was like oh god this is so boring and oh stop talking like jesus shut up <laughs> like how am i going to talk about this film and then afterwards, I was like, I can't stop thinking about this film. Mm. Like, it was really good. I like, I want to watch it again, like now. <laughs> so that, that I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure why I hated it, but maybe it was because it was so different from everything that I'd seen before. So it was like, it kind of caught me off guard. Uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I don't think there's conventional stakes in the sense. I think it's yeah. a film that lacks conflict in many ways but because the conflict is kind of within the the main character yeah it's like himself yeah <laughs> and films like that can either lose you or, or or keep you going and i think by the end of it you if you invest enough you're like okay I, I i'm on board with this but i think it can lose people if they're not it with it like what wanting to invest in the whole uh, whole film because i mean obviously it starts off with John Cusack not being a likable person at all, but you eventually like win its way around, you know. You do like him in the end, mm. I think. Yeah, has a clear, definite journey. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. I also struggle at first because the script that I wrote two years ago is all true, so I'm struggling with all romantic comedies now, uh, especially with certain scenes. Um, but I I I watched the whole thing, <laughs> and I enjoyed myself. So that was that was good. <laughs> yeah, I, d I, d I really liked it, um, but not during. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure they'll put that on the posters. <laughs> I did not yeah. enjoy this film while viewing a Nick Aslan wolfing. 
2016. I thought it was 18. great afterwards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a film that lingers with you, but dry, drags with it. <laughs> and whatever comes out of this episode, you can't ever remove the fact that this film made me aware about the movie called The Big Chill. And when you look at that poster, Jave Goldblum is just magnificent on that poster. <laughs> I don't even remember that. Oh... Uh, they they just uh, at one point they referenced the, the it's a kind of a joke. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. I do remember them <laughs> referencing so it. So it was a big chill. What the hell? Oh wow. Okay, that's a young uh, Jeff Goldblum. That's too. like an um, speaking of guy. Jeff Goldblum. That's like the poster in Jurassic Park: The Lost World, right? So at the very end of Jurassic Park: The Lost World, there's a poster for um, King Lear starring Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, why didn't they make that movie? <laughs> why did they not make that movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one to see. I uh, don't. There is a uh, Hamlet, uh, I mean, in um, Last Action Hero. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. It was an ignorant Hamlet, but yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> why? <laughs> Just because it's funny. And I mean, it's uh, it, the film was made. Uh, Unexpected. Yeah, you know. Arnold Schwarzenegger is now doing. It'd be like seeing a poster Arnold Schwarzenegger running for governor. You're like, ah, I'll never have. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Donald Trump uh. and Arnold Schwarzenegger. America, what are you doing? <laughs> the Rock, 2K2, 2K22. <laughs> I've heard this is a thing. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, have you ever seen his app? Uh, the rock app on the s- no, I have not. <laughs> so it's kind of um, um oh, is alarm. Is it the there's a I know there's the j- the rocks plan. It's like a s- it's like a stepped plan for something, and like one of them, one of the things on his plan, like number fifteen, is reboot Jumanji. I've <laughs> <laughs> no, it's an app to help you yeah organize your day at the end, and there is an alarm clock in there, and we got something like beep 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 or. Uh, Good morning, sunshine. Yeah, that's what The Rock just said. Because <laughs> it's like, okay. <laughs> and you've got The it Rock. It doesn't matter that you're not up. <laughs> and the, the Rock clock that starts exactly when he actually wakes up and you can't turn off. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, wow, that is that is an app, isn't it? Oh. That's branding, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Start your day with that's Dwayne. Um... Do you have? Do you want to single out any scene from that film in particular uh, that scene. really uh, stands out? I don't know. Uh, I mean, they're they're all there's there's so many good scenes. They're all 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 different. You know, they're different. I I think the um, the, the first scene where you see Jack Black when he comes into the store is <laughs> just amazing because <laughs> they're they're just like going about their month. It's, it's like everybody's Monday morning. You know, you're just trying to get into the other thing and they're just uh what is it bell and sebastian they're listening to this quite you know gentle music and he just comes in like this powerball of excitement and everything oh and he's yeah. just putting on this his mixtape that he's made over the weekend and there's katrina the waves what god sunshine you know <laughs> and, he starts, oh, yeah. and he's just like a whirling dervish right throughout the store yeah until uh, John comes like jumps over the counter <laughs> and turns it off and throws it away. Right, right, right. <laughs> and it, actually, his quote there, or his line is like, you know, we just wanted something that we could we could ignore. <laughs> and and sometimes you know you do want music like that. You know, you just want it in the back. In the back. It's there. It's like a comfort. You know, but mm. you're not really listening to it as <laughs> such. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so not to insult you, PJ, but this okay. movie was just re- it was released I- t- eighteen years ago. You're, you're a bit older than that, but okay. what 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 was the spark that made you? So at the time it was called LP Records, I think, like what was called vinyls. What what was the spark that you? Yeah, vinyls. Because that's what was that was what was available at the time. I mean, if uh, if somebody was if it was like somebody was born now, it would be. You know, on your computer, yeah, 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 downloads. Oh right. Uh, you know, so I mean, that that's what was about at the time. It was you've gone through like LPs and cassettes, CDs. I mean, like <laughs> going really far. Like when we were kids, we had you just probably won't even remember eight tracks in the car, and that they were these big, like about six inch by four inch, like 
tapes <laughs> and tape player and the tape. My dad had them like of country stones like Big Tom. <laughs> this year, like, oh, that's uh, great. You know, it just it, it it was never about. I mean, originally it was never mm. about the the format as such. It was just about the music. Yeah. Uh, okay. And yeah. I just got. I just cont- I mean, like, I have loads of cassettes and I've loads of CDs, but I have. Tons of vinyl. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. Actually, but, my yeah. question must have been then. So uh, you are getting some today. So that's not nostalgia then. Sorry. You getting so many still today is nostalgia or? Well, there's an argument that it sounds better as well now. You know, the quality on a vinyl is, st- is like still yeah. pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I because mean, the thing that killed CDs is that CDs are crap. Like you scratch yeah. a disc, it's knackered. Yeah. You know, you lose that song. Yeah. Whereas yeah. an LP is far s- a di- more difficult to yeah. scratch. You can still yeah. do it, yeah. but it's far more difficult yeah. to do it. Yeah, it's actually it's amazing. Like when you go, when you if you are into like collecting records and you go around like all the charity shops and that, and of course nowadays everybody sort of got wise to the fact that a lot of these records might be worth more to people second hand. So I mean, you have like Oxfam who. Uh, like I did call in today, but I, I, um, <laughs> I held myself back from purchasing anything just yet. But I mean, the they their prices like in the recent years have gone up because they realise the value of of that people will yeah. collect these second hand. But it's amazing you're talking about scra- scratching records. I mean, that's one thing I'd always do. It's always you always look at it and see if it's scratched or not. It's amazing. Somehow, you th- sometimes you look at them and you think that's scratched. If you take it home and you play it, it plays perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Mm. But mm. the CD. same thing probably couldn't be said for CDs. No, uh, that was the one thing that I found quite funny when watching this film. Like they have a CD section in the in the record store, which all record stores kind of do as well. Um, and I'm just like CDs were just not collectible. Like there was nothing fun about collecting a CD because it was buying a box. Yeah, you know. These little fold outs of posters, like yeah. nobody wants these, no. you know. Yeah, like I mean, like the everybody sort of refers to the the album, the covers, and true enough, it was like the, the artwork and that was just amazing, you know. It's mm. it's like it's like the other thing uh, that I've noticed, like uh, concert tickets. I, I know this seems like a very trivial thing, but like back in the eighties and that era. I'd get concert tickets and they'd have like the person's like yeah. image on them and that. Mm-hmm. And now it's everything that's like print out at home, you know, a big A4 sheet. Yeah, yeah. S- where, when we're supposedly be supposed to be saving paper and that, and you have to print out a big <laughs> A4 sheet. <laughs> Whereas before you had had a, you know. Yeah. So yeah. There's something I don't understand. I've seen in, uh, recently it dawned, on, it dawned on me, especially with Ready Player One, people on Instagram posting pictures of that square generic uh ticket but yeah i've seen that but does mean it, what what the hell what it is not mm-hmm. uh, at least when i post tickets uh when this happens i try to compose the frame or whatever i think so I I mean, like yeah i think i know the stereotypical i'm at the cinema instagram pic it goes as follows so you you're in you you've, you've got to set it up first right you've got to like take a photo in the car traveling to the place so you like take the photo in the car right <laughs> Then you follow that up with either like a photo of you holding the popcorn, right? You got a bit of that going, right? Or like, or from that angle looking down at the popcorn. But the the killer picture, which you can ignore all the other two, those two are optional, right? In Britain, anyway, is the person is clearly sat in the seat. They've got the ticket out, and they've also got the Tango Ice Blast in the photo as well. They've got the blue and the blueberry and raspberry Tango Ice Blast, and the biggest point is, right, the ticket, it's clear the photo's got the flash on because it's too dark in the room because it's just a really bright ice blast and a really illuminated ticket. And you're just like, if you're in the cinema and you see a flash go off, you're like, just shout Instagram at them because it's like, Instagram, because that's clearly what the person is doing. 
I mean, the other option is you also take a photo of the screen saying, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I mean, or Snapchat during the fucking movie. No, I mean, certain chains of cinema, and um, one here, I've seen someone who actually composed, he had a DeLorean, so he used that to, to have the frame, and the theater ticket, who was like a deluxe kind of collectible, and he did a very nice uh, fra frame composition, which, that was great. But usually it's, yeah, just an it's Instagram crap. Ice, like Tango Ice Blast and a photo of your ticket. <laughs> yes. Which yes. is a piece of paper that's been teared. Uh, <laughs> the first thing I noticed in this movie, because you pointed it, it out multiple times in Baby Driver, the first thing you hear is not the <coughs> in Baby Driver, but you hear the sound of someone putting a record on and, yeah. and, and started yeah. it. Yeah. And Very that it opening image is, is just, because it uh, uh, that opening image is just brilliant the way it's, it just concentrates on the record and then it sort of pans down to the the head the head, the, the wire and the headphones you know the lip, mm -hmm. lip wire yeah yeah like and his his opening statement i mean i have to read i have to read this out because i think this is a brilliant quote from what came first the music or the misery people worry about kids playing with guns or watching violent videos that some sort of culture of violence will take them over Nobody worries about kids listening to thousands, literally thousands of songs about heartbreak, rejection, pain, misery and loss. Did I listen to pop music because I was miserable? Or was I miserable because I listened to pop music? I just think that's a brilliant yeah, quote. I totally agree. <laughs> um, and to open a film and with just, that. Yeah. It just sets up the whole film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I just think it's brilliant. Especially because it's like five minutes in and I was like, I want to stop that and just... <laughs> Mind let's, blown. let's unpack <laughs> that right there. Oh <laughs> shit! Because <laughs> let's face it, there's yeah. a lot of crap out there, man. Yeah. There's a lot of rubbish, drivel. I remember listening to the radio and being so shocked that because obviously Ariana Grande. Oh, right, is this side to side? Yeah, she has a song about being you like uh, s fucked so hard. That she's walking wrong. What here the is, hell here's is the, going but here, on? Here's the lyrics, right? And she complains oh she's dear. objectified after the concert. I mean... Okay. I mean, no. it's more interesting because the song is one of these, like, pop songs that it's just you hear the, you know, the sort of steel drummy effect ever since Ed Sheeran, even before Ed Sheeran, really, like, Sheeran, Ed Sheeran, yeah. You know that whole steel drums became really popular around about 2015, right? Island. Yeah. Hey, Sean Paul and all that. I saved myself from doing an, an impression there. Yeah, don't I'm do that. like, don't do that, Adam. Don't do, <laughs> don't do any sort of accent <laughs> revolving steel drums. Um, <laughs> but you just hear this music and then you're like, all right, whatever. And you're not listening to the lyrics. But then you like cue in and you just hear her going, boy, you've got me walking side to side. You're like, hang on, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And then you listen and you're like, uh, what, something, something like, uh, put your bo put your body on me or something no, like that. No, it starts really like, f like. I've been there all night. I've been there all day. And boy, you've got me walking side to side. That's that's Adam the Adam knows it. Adam knows it. <coughs> yeah. Well I mean, done. It's a, <laughs> it's a song, man. That's but that's the thing because it starts really generic and you're like, oh, I don't care. And then it says that mm. line and you're just like. Wait, what? Yeah. Like, think, yeah. Huh? And the <laughs> thing is that some artists are so talented. That I'll use the r recent example, right? Um, Nicki Minaj just brought out like two songs, right? New two new singles, and you listen to them and go, "These are really good. Like she these are really good. well put together." But then you listen to stuff she's been putting out or featuring on for the last like four years. I'm like, she's got the system down. Feature on songs that are rubbish <laughs> and make the money. And then bring out your own stuff, which is quality, because nobody will remember the stuff you're featured on. And also, if you have, if you um, have a name for yourself, people s are are so kind of jaded about how amazing you are as like a personality as well as the kind of music that you put out that you can put out shit, and people will still listen to you and hate anyone else who says anything bad about you, and they just become this like god, and yeah. like. You, you kind of think, um, <coughs> you know, um, it's uh, like you kind yeah. of. So I understand about music snobbery, and yeah. and that was something that I don't know. I'd never I'd never really seen in a film I in that way because it was so outright 
they were so rude to <laughs> anyone coming in. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> we want that last scene is, is, yeah, when the man comes in and he wants, he says, have you got Stevie Wonder's, uh, I think it's called, uh, just called the sale on you. He says, no, we wouldn't play that puppy crap. Go to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> and he think he comes out and he's just doesn't like, the film it's, it's not even his you know his choice it's his daughter's choice I know the, the <laughs> it's more funny because in the end credits is Stevie Wonder right and it's all yeah. I, I really I, I can't remember if it is I don't want to say if it is I just called to say I loved you it might be but it, it'd be funny no it's um, isn't she lovely or something no no it's not that it's uh, it's there are so when, many. I, when I when I fall in love Oh yeah, and I think that is so yeah. it's so apt for the the final song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need that up, Jan. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the whole music music snobbery is a whole really weird category. Of it is like the yeah. other when the other guy, the collector, he's in the store and Jack Black's going around putting all the things in, and he asks him about this particular record. And he, Jack Black goes, oh, hold on, I'll see. He walks behind the counter, he brings it out, and the, the guy takes it over, pulls it out, has a look, you know, and see the, see the condition of it. And then he says, how much do you want for it? And he says, oh, well, let's see. No, well, I'm actually not actually selling it today. <laughs> he puts it back, puts it back. The guy goes, oh, walks out of the shop, and then there's this, uh, <laughs> like, our customer's up. He says, oh, how much do you want for that? He says, oh. About forty dollars. So it's okay. <laughs> I mean, it always reminds me of my uh, my favorite one of my favorite Frankie Boyle jokes, stuff like that, where it's like an Englishman walks into a bar in Scotland and says, "Can I get a lager in line?" And the barman goes, "We don't do cocktails." <laughs> uh, stuff like that always reminds me of those sort of like we don't we they... don't like your type round here, do we? Yeah, yeah. And you kind of get it because it's like there's so much amazing stuff out there. You just have to find it. And I think because there's this whole thing of like, oh, there's so much rubbish. There's so much bad music out there. And it's like, yeah, but there were probably bad music. Uh, all the like oh, pop music yes. is always going to be, uh, yeah. you know. And there's always <coughs> lost stuff as well. I mean, we'll probably talk about it in a later episode. Uh, uh, Sugar Man. Ah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Stevie Wonder track is, uh, I believe, When I Fall in Love. Wow. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if, if you think about it, when like at the end of the show, it's sort of yeah. rekindled the, rekindling the, the relationship. So it's so appropriate, you know, because he has basically proposed, he's more or less proposed to her at that point. Uh, so, yeah, I just think as an end, cr- end, end song, it's... Mm. Uh, Amazing. Shout out to Henry the Fourth Part One. There's the direct reference to Henry the Fourth Part One in that proposal scene. Okay. She says okay. he says the same lines. Really? She's like I will, I do, or something like that. I do, no. I will. See, yeah. y- you nice. you have to have for people who won't uh, who don't speak English. Obviously, they they have to have the French adaptation if they speak French, and they that's the kind I haven't watched the French version, but they will lose on. Ma- they will lose massively because they no one ever except Disney uh, tra- will will translate those songs. So you have to actually know what they are saying in the th- in the songs to be a hundred percent of the whole of the meaning of the whole of the they, they, they well thought out like it was yeah they yeah. had their everything yeah. um, exactly on point mm-hmm. there they wanted that to be. I've always wondered that, like, if you have a really English or American or Western reference and then it, it gets translated, like, do they then change the reference to mm-hmm. be they do. connected to... Uh, they do, but it's, uh, yeah, they, they obviously they, it's not, it's uh, always adaptation instead of translation, yeah. but um, Things still like it's not so as... Would, would they have the same songs... I think yes. I do think they would not go to. Well, I I don't. I'm not sure, but I don't think they would go to the trouble to actually put different songs, songs, and then edit the credits and do the whole yeah. thing. Uh, only that I know of, Disney is translating, uh, is adapting. So like in Moana, they kept the sonority, the the sounds, but the the, the meaning is completely different. Uh, yeah. Like the. Um, 
uh, yeah, the song, uh, there's one <coughs> song there that was completely different. Um, but yeah, y you, you will lose. Uh, because one big thing I think I have to say it like w we love uh, songs in Eng in English uh, in France is because we don't understand uh, what they say and which is most of the time completely random crap so but we don't realize that so it's fine uh, <laughs> it's like when you said earlier like uh, butter melting like <laughs> y you speak French I could say the most horrible things to you it was just wow you, you just yeah. undress me now. I so I just wow. so yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I just told you to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah, and the guy on the train's like, sorry, don't take real cards. You're like, enculé. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, so that's why there are some truth in the 93-7 rule. <laughs> <laughs> some truth in the uh, some, because I think you see <laughs> Yeah, you can like, um, it depends on, yeah, the tone and everything. Like yeah, of you course. Should say that, yeah. I fuck you. You're you're an asshole. You're so <laughs> an asshole. I hate you with the with the, the whole extent of my my being. Maybe. Oh, look at <laughs> look at Jan using the ta the, the technique we were taught a year ago. There, uh -huh. the ninety three. There. <laughs> I'd like to kill you so much. You know. Like, if you touch uh, my if you touch so my stuff so in the much. fridge again, I'll gouge out your eyes. <laughs> so I will. So I will. And do that in French, so they not they don't understand anything at all. Uh, it's something what's quite funny. My dad likes to war to play with that in the U.S. Um, apparently, well, there's uh, they like um, born as you're patriotic. Now. So they <laughs> like they speak English and they love to speak English, and they are panicking if someone Seba. if someone is not making the effort to speak English. Yes. So my dad used to. <laughs> To just uh, because they, they speak there very fast and they they don't repeat or whatever sometimes when you and my dad would just like confront them with answering their questions which he didn't understand obviously in French and then you can see the panic veil <laughs> in the eyes like uh, I wish he does that with like little <coughs> things it's like so you want fries for that he's like oui <laughs> and like sorry what it is the best feeling as well when you hear. Um, people speaking uh, like a language that you know and they think that you don't understand them and they're saying something rude about <laughs> the situation or, or the English like you know I don't know something or, or even you I'm sure sometimes yeah, that happens that's a great like feeling I like <laughs> this all reminds me of the, the Lee Evans joke which is um you know how you know how if you go over to another country, you are, when you're like trying to order, even even actually here, even if you're in an Italian restaurant, you'll <laughs> always try and say the name of the dish <laughs> in yes, with an Italian, Italian accent. Yes. So it's like I'll have the focaccia <laughs> instead of just saying I'll have the focaccia. You're like focaccia. <laughs> like, do you reckon he makes this joke? Do you reckon Spanish people do that? Like so they're in like Alicante <laughs> or something. Is they're like in one of those places that are clearly built for like you know. Uh, English tourists coming over so you can get like a breakfast so they're like uh, they're all speaking Spanish like oh, da, 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 da. bacon egg and chips <laughs> bangers and mash and they like try and do like an English accent but it's just got a hint of Spanish in it and it's, it's great the bacon eggs and spam that reminds me of the uh, Harry Enfield it was uh, and he done the uh, he done this he, he done the I think um, I think it was maybe a, a, another group. Um, they were basically taken off, you know, like it would be a usual thing, like for people to go for a curry at the end of the night, you know, after having all the drunk, you know. Is this usually, going? Is this going for an English? Yeah, going for yeah, an that's English. Yeah, um, so that's the pack. This in the, the yeah. these Asian group of yeah, Canadians, yeah, 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 and they 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 have this scene where they're all going for a, a, a an English. <laughs> they like mimic up you know and the give us the, the hottest one you know the hottest curry and we'll have a pop of dumps and all this here and they're <laughs> making fun of the waiter and all this here and it's just you know it's a mickey th it's a, like a reverse in the whole the whole thing you know because usually the English would go and they make fun of the Indian yeah, yeah, and yeah. all that there. from and goodness gracious me goodness it's gracious it's me great. exactly yeah, yeah. Love it's, it's so <laughs> perfect oh it's so good Brilliant. Languages. Brilliant. We talked about hello, hello in a in a previous episode. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello. Oh, hello. oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Sorry. You see, you've just hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 Good morning. Yeah. Good <laughs> Agent Crabtree. Yeah, who was perfectly fluent in uh, in French. 
That was great. Jan told us that actor was perfectly good at drinking in, in French. I'm like, that's fantastic. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> like, he could speak fluent French. And he's, <laughs> I just imagine him like talking like just in French. He's like, action. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> 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 he was. He was. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Um, just keeping an eye on this camera here, yeah, and for battery life, we're at thirty-five percent. Just for an eye of. Okay, it's something wise. that's quite cool. Is the, that's an eight? Yes. So the battery is stellar. Thirty-five w- should probably last us two hours or something. Hopefully. Yeah. Nice. Um, Although it was at about ninety earlier, so it just depends on the apps. Ah, okay. Like yeah, I think this is a powerful app, so we've probably got another like thirty odd minutes, probably okay. at to an hour. Um, I so um, my the film which made me aware of the like kind of music thing it was Empire Records. Oh. Actually, yeah. uh, <laughs> I have not seen this yet. Uh, the the main reason is as always the main original reason is as always Liv Tyler. Uh, of course. Um, but yeah, I. I I grew to love it uh very quickly. Uh and it's it's funny because they, I think we talked about it earlier. Too. The studio wanted to uh, have a teen movie and they passed on Clueless because they already had that movie and it was probably the the, the worst decision ever for a studio because Empire Records is cult for many people but not as massively successful as Clueless. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we'll do we'll do um, because this one will either it will definitely go either into the vault of masterpiece or uh, where we have those weird thingy uh, coming. Legendary. Yeah. Yes, yes, probably. Legendary. Yeah, yeah, legendary, probably. Yeah, yeah, for me. Um, I feel we've shifted from the film. Does anyone else have any major things they want to bring up with the film? I actually don't. Anyone uh, else? It's a really hard film to exp- like talk about <laughs> as well like because it's so there's so many layers yeah. and mm-hmm. so um <coughs> i feel like i also feel like if if, if you're listening to our podcast you should You've probably watch the film yeah. before yeah. you because there's so many spoilers and we just i think we just his uh it is, is, is his sister jo- joan cusack isn't it in the yeah film? yeah that's yeah, yeah. his sister I, I think his, she's got a very good role in it as well as uh, the, the you know like his friends you know and she just <laughs> she just smirks and he's like Rob you bastard <laughs> and, and then walks outside. out <laughs> like, it's interesting what? to see how many <laughs> films this went on to inspire because I mean the t- her and Jack Black then went on to do School of Rock a couple of years later uh-huh, that's you know true, that's true yeah, um, yeah. And a lot, even when I was watching the scenes in the, the record shop, I kept thinking of a film I saw when I was a, ki- a teenager called Be Kind Rewind with Jack Black, which is the recreating the VHS tapes, yeah, they all get a race. Michel Gondry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That reminded me a lot of Be Kind Rewind. Oh, yes, that's, I, I was trying to think of the plot of that, Be Kind Rewind. That's that's the one where they uh, reenact all the films. They remake all the films because they all got a race. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, they, 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 it's called that's The Sweet. On the cheap. <laughs> you're, you're doing Swede. Uh, it's it's sparkled the name to actually when people do that. It's called that now. Yeah. Uh, Swede, Swede, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that film. Uh, cool, yeah, cool. just one thing then. Um, there's something I think was really nicely portrayed and hurt because, so you know when when you're in love with someone and you don't really talk with them and you Im- you imagine stuff. So when he was imagining. That um, Laura was having sex with uh, with Ray <laughs> upstairs, <laughs> and uh, he was just do do making do stories do in his head. Do 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Do do. And it's, uh, it's uh, I think it's Barry White. It's better. <laughs> it's oh, just oh. Um, yeah. He's gonna I can't hear that song. I can only. I <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't it wasn't John Hamm singing that, so I wasn't as impressed as uh, I was in Baby Driver when that made an appearance. Uh, <laughs> Music John, Ham is <laughs> John, John Hamm is, is the reason to live. <laughs> that's that's like the, the bit where um, Jack Black is explaining what's on. He says, "Go on, pl- play the next song. Play the next song." He says, "What is it?" He says, and he he pr- he says whatever the, the song is. And the other shop assistant, he's, "Oh, that that one by such and such." He says, "No, no, no, <laughs> it's not that person. It's the other. What's wrong with that person?" And it's you know. It, and it, and it's as uh, uh, John Cusack's ca- his character says like, what's r- you know it can't be wrong to state a musical preference and that's all it is you know yeah. it's people decide that they pr- they prefer one version over another. Yeah. 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 Mm, mm. Oh, it's yes. funny though. Uh, until I actually attended the concert twenty years ago, I always 
hated um, recording of concerts because I really loved the studio and the without the, wah, the clapping and everything. Uh -huh. But I actually, at some point, attended one <coughs> and obviously I was sold. But yeah, so we had this like snobbery or whatever for for many years. Yeah, and it's just st stopped. Live, live music works out. It's oh a shame right. that the culture of gigging. That's well, it's a whole another conversation for another podcast. Um, gig culture nowadays. Um, it's totally changed, and it's it's more harder to see so much stuff because the a price and the, then price the availability as well. I mean, for example, there used to be a time where some venues would just be that would be three, and people would turn up and they would play. But now it's a whole like business structure to yeah. even get on a stage somewhere to play, yeah. and it's just it's sad mm. in a way. The um, another bit where uh, John goes goes that goes to the goes to the nightclub, and he's just <laughs> yeah. walking in, and he hears. Peter Front and baby, I love your way. And it's uh, is it Lisa Bonet? Is that how you pronounce mm -hmm. the name? And it's her. And he says, "I always fucking hate that song." But now I actually, <laughs> 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 you know, yeah. and that's you know that's that's the beauty of music. I think is that you know you could one person could do a song and you can really love it, and then another person could do it and you could just really hate it. And it's the same song. It's the same. It's the same sentiment and everything. It's just somebody is doing it in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Or you change like yeah. over yeah. time, and you like listen back, and you're like, oh, I that's, used to hate the song. Uh, that's true as well. I mean, like I think as 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 you get older, like you know, for me, like there there will be songs that are re directly relatable to different times in my life and different mm. experiences and that, and then they might change, you know, as as you get older and everything. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Yeah, that's, that's a nice rounded way to bring me into asking the question. Mm. What yeah. question is that? Adam? Well, <laughs> so you know they're good, the bad, and they're just playing standard. We oh rate yeah. films <laughs> on a good, bad, or just playing standard category. Good being, you know, I would watch this again. This was great. This meant something to me. To just plain standard being, well, this was just a thing we either watch for a podcast or something that even if it was on ITV, I'd maybe pass even while doing the ironing on. So, with that in mind, PJ, Jan and Nick was high fidelity, good, bad, or just plain standard? And obviously, we start with our guest, PJ. Good. Jan? Good. Uh, it hurts at some times, but good, good. Anouk? Yes, it was very good. All right. Four four goods there. Four very goods. Yeah. Good, Definitely good. Uh, I didn't have any flair in mind because <coughs> I added flares. No, it was perfect. It's, it's, it's a music lover. If you like music and you just want a good, decent, mm. entertaining film to watch, yeah, uh, I could recommend this. Yeah. Awesome. We can go into the questionnaire now. Oh, yes, we can. Because we've seen uh, last time that uh, Tyrell reclaimed the word cunt. Oh yeah, uh, which uh, because vagina, yeah, in the uh, yeah. the sword scabbard, sheave, yeah. yes. sheave, sheave your sword, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's going to be the first T-shirt, right? Uh, <laughs> make, makes my feminism boil. Uh, I need to go back and listen to the quote because he's like, I want that on a T-shirt somewhere. That is going to be our first merch. It's like it's no, what was it? It beats sh something about sheaving a sword. I said. Yeah. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah, it's like yeah, the difference between uh, a, ma uh, a woman is not complete without a man, but no, it's actually a human. Uh, uh, a, ma a woman is only useful uh, whether it's just like yeah, okay. <laughs> 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 um, All so right, PJ. Yes. Uh, milk in a wine glass questionnaire ba okay. based on Marcel Proust, uh, Bernard Pivot, and James Lipton. What is your favorite word? I don't have a. Favorite word, uh, but I was think I, I knew this was coming up funny, and uh, is there was some uh, I've been thinking of some words that are sort of like colloquialisms, mm. you know, and there there's so, some that sort of don't get used, or if they do, it's sort of like in a very specific area, like uh, there's one called thievless. Uh, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> do you uh, okay? I, I'm I'm just going to put this out there and. Uh, See if you think you know what it might mean. Oh, Somebody this is a this is a, this is a return to. Oh, I didn't nick in that. The <laughs> the quiz we had with Emma, <laughs> where we got phrases in Doric and we tried to work them out. <laughs> okay. So uh. this is episode two. Of, oh, I didn't nick in that. <laughs> so well, okay, I'll, I'll explain. Basically, it's like somebody who's absolutely useless. 
stateless, you know. It's stateless. Like we we got uh, apprentices on, you know, and they're just like <laughs> brain dead, you know. Yeah, and yeah. You, uh, like we were all they were fucking stateless. They couldn't hammer any old piece of wood, you know. Oh they're dear. just complete. Uh, I like that. Stateless. 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 That was a, that was <laughs> another installment of fuck. I didn't make that. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really nice word. Uh, How do you spell uh, that? I'm not sure. I don't that. know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's uh, what I mean. Like, uh, it's yeah. not. Okay. It's it's probably nothing you'll ever find in a dictionary. Okay. You know, it's if you uh, if you know how that's spelled, leave a comment on this video. <laughs> um, or guess. Uh, what is your least favorite word? <sighs> Again, these are not th things that occupy my mind. <laughs> Um, no, uh, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to have to pass on that one. Okay. <laughs> um, so I'll reverse that question now. Okay. Creatively, <laughs> spiritually, or emotionally, what turns you on? Uh, uh, I, think, uh, I think the challenge. You know, if somebody comes to you and they... Well, uh, like Crystal Maze or Krypton Factor. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite, <laughs> you know. Fort um, Boyard. Do, 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 got, do. You know, I've got this idea. How do I? How do I get this? How do I make this work? You know, how do I? How do I create uh, something like that? There, mm. you know, um, s solving the problems. You know, something like that. There. I think I'm starting to turn into my dad because I didn't hear crystal maze. I heard crystal meth. <laughs> the idea of, of <laughs> cooking crystal meth is a challenge. So let's. <laughs> yeah, okay. Just because well you got need to meet Brian <laughs> Cranston doesn't mean you can become Walter White. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And creatively, spiritually, uh, or emotionally, what turns you off? I think this is something that was uh, you covered in your last podcast. Uh, people not being daring enough. Safety, People, yeah. Safety Terrell, Terrell really talks about safety. Drives me, like uh, especially uh, the, the last sort of productions we're doing, you know, and, and people just go for the safest option, and they're just thinking like, you know, you've got good actors here, you've got a decent set, this could be so much better with very minimal effort, mm. and yeah. it just drives me up the wall that people just won't take that step, and mm. you know everything's there. Just a little bit of effort, and it, uh, this makes me excited for August. That's uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the return yeah, yeah. of Mrs. Miggins. We know Mrs. Miggins that you can take anything, so we'll <laughs> we'll be bold. Oh, I don't like. I only wanted. I thought this was my fair lady. Oh no. Uh, what is your favorite curse word? Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fuck. I, we should really should do a tally for how many people does fuck. I think we're on uh, yeah. six. It's, it's yeah. just, I mean, uh, my mum would like it. Like, but yeah, it just trips off the tongue so easily. Uh, yeah. Don't you mean feck? Oh, feck. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Full, fully let it. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay. What sound or noise do you like? Sound or noise? <laughs> he, he's so exasper he's aspirated there. Yeah. I'd say uh, the noise of a diamond on the record, probably. Oh, <laughs> stylus. <laughs> stylus, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's the gentle waves of the ocean on the shore. Aww. That's quite nice. That is quite soothing, yeah. Nice. Uh, dislike? Is it it's noise? Yeah, again? noise, yeah. Um, <laughs> Probably some like somebody's nails on the <laughs> chalkboard oh, yeah. or something like that there. Ugh. Uh, yeah. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Uh, I'd like to be an actor. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, 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 what's your prof what's your profession right well, now? Uh, well, well, I mean, like the, my day job is building and labouring. You know, which I mean, like, don't get me wrong. There is, you know, uh, there is a certain amount of uh, what would you call it? You know the. Does satisfy a certain. It's great if you love uh, cups of tea. Yeah. Sorry. It's great. It's a great job if you love cups of tea. <laughs> no, that's a, that's a myth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean you're yeah you're probably not making your main income from acting, but yeah. you're still attempting yeah. it. Yes, yes, uh, definitely. already. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean I, I enjoy acting. I enjoy directing actually as well. Um, <laughs> seeing, uh, taking something from a page and making it real mm. and, and seeing people inhabit 
characters and make them not something that's just written out lines yeah. but something with filling and a story in that there. Mm. It's really, I really do like that there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, what profession other than your own would you not like to attend? Cleaning sewers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff like that. I still think yeah. I have the best answer for that one. Which is? Cheese maker. I hate cheese. I, cheese. Cheese. I hate cheese. I hate cheese. So like the idea of being a cheesemonger, like stuck smelling cheese all day, yeah. just well, that would. I would just yeah. no. I can't deal with that. I mean, the, our fridge is uh, filled with baby bell right now. <laughs> it's an homage. <laughs> to well, well, Jan, well, yeah. When Jan first moved in here, he had like this blue cheese thing. And I'm like, Jan, um, can you put that like in a Tupperware box so that every time I don't open the fridge, I want to gag. He's like, Yeah, sure, no worries. <laughs> If heaven exists, what would you like? To hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates. Come on in. <laughs> Please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've brought your record. Li we've brought your record collection. Yeah. We've, we've got. <laughs> yeah. We've got. We've got a record shop up here. Yeah. Uh, and if you're Everything's on credit. <laughs> if you're going to hell, there's also your collection, but no, n no player. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all just CDs that, like every other track, is skips. Look at them. <laughs> you yeah. like music, don't you? <laughs> You've just brought up a very interesting point. It's like <laughs> this thing about buying records, like, you know, is you're in this record shop and you're looking at it. But you're trying to imagine <laughs> what that actually sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> Should I work out with the front cover and the back and the t song titles what what it's gonna exactly. say? Like, yeah. 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 Well, I think I think PJ's <laughs> hell would be it's like hell is loads and loads of records, every record in the world, but you can't play them. You can only stick them on your wall. <laughs> oh no, no, sacrilege! <laughs> It's a new thing. Yeah. <laughs> and they're uh, all scratched. Uh, <laughs> yeah, all of them. Um, if you were reincarnated as some other plant or animal, God. what would it be? Being a vegetarian, this plant's better look out. Reincarnated as God? If you don't give him answers. No. You just said so, God. Eh? No. Uh, uh, I don't know. Probably a cat. It could be a cat. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Who knows? Yeah. I have no idea. Trying These to are. Uh, <laughs> try to dominate the world. Yeah. Like. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So that one we added last time, uh, inspired by, well, it's actually the exact same question, by a Joe Rogan episode. So if you had the opportunity to go and view any culture from the past, like if you were completely invisible and had a babel fish and walked around amongst the Romans or cave people or Native Americans before the European came, who would you choose? I was going to say... The Egyptians, to see how they built those bloody pyramids. <laughs> But uh, equally, th those guys in East Ireland, those big heads, to see how they've uh, done those. Because yeah. those are amazing. Yeah. But, uh, I can yeah. see I can see your work in construction, PJ. You just want to go <laughs> back and see. You want to go back and see how they did it. Like, how uh, do they do this without a JCB? Uh, yeah. We, uh, they've never even got a cement mixer. It's just one block mixing mud together. No, oh, that's the thing. They weren't even jointed. I know. That's, that's never going to stay up. You've no cement. <laughs> There's no lintel on that. There's no lintel on that. I uh, yeah, we, we will it because oh, can't take that down. That's a structural wall. <laughs> support them wall. <laughs> that's a support them wall. There, can I go through there? <laughs> it's it's it's. It. It's a brand new question, so we haven't oh no. answered it yet. So we will do that in the next episode when we don't have a guest. But uh, my mind would be Egypt probably also because oh yeah, I, I always um, because you know the it's said that uh, um, slaves built them, but I read like 20 or 20 odd years ago uh, a novelist who is also like an, a massive in uh, Egyptologist, and who made it clear that they were not slaves. And there were some studies, recent studies, like 10 years ago. Uh, saying that indeed they were not slaves because they found like um, their corners and they were living and it was clearly not not slaves. Anyway, uh, I, w I would go there to to, to check. <laughs> <laughs> and if they are, <laughs> yeah. Um, two bonus questions. Uh, I'll open the floor to you guys. Whatever you want. What's the first record you bought? <sighs> I should have known you would ask this, <laughs> and it's very hard. I oh, I know. What one do you have the fondest oh, memory no, of? Then? I, okay. 
I think the first uh, LP I got, I didn't actually pay for. To explain, I worked in my uh, grand grandparents' uh, shop, and the boxes of crisps. They were doing this promotion where you gathered the ends of uh, so yeah, many yeah, yeah. boxes of crisps and you sent them away, and they got uh, a record by ELO, one of their albums. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, and I think my first single. <laughs> uh, was probably something like the Nolans or Casey and the Sunshine Band, something like that. You know, something really cheesy. <laughs> and, uh, but I loved it. You yeah. know, I still yeah. do. You know, <coughs> yeah. Um, what records mean? Uh, I mean, because people know I, I buy records, they think, you know, a lot of money on them. There's not really. The most I've spent on a record... I am a big Genesis fan, Phil Collins, mm. you know. Um, so I have a copy of their first LP, and it's, it's paid about 30 quid for it, which isn't in record collecting, it's nothing really. But the story is more interesting because their first album is called From Genesis to Revelation, and the LP cover is just a black cover. And it's just got this little title at the top and sort of like gothic writing from Genesis to Revelation. So similarly what happened <coughs> when this was sent out to the record stores is that when they saw the title, they thought, oh, it must be a religious record. We'll put it in the religious <laughs> And so it never sold in any great amounts. So <laughs> it's like uh, Spinal Taps record, it's just all yeah, black. Yeah. <laughs> How, are going now? How are they going to know it's uh, As a record, it's, it's really, it's like, it's not sort of like full on. It's like really pastoral. It's really sort of bah, 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 bah. and there's one song on it called "The Silent Sun," and it's just it's just ding, 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 ding. you know it's just so s- different. So mm. I mean they they have gone through so many ca- incarnations, you know, as a group and so many types of music. It's you know it's hard to pin down one uh, one period of of their. Musical references, not uh, you know. It's so that that begs the question that has to be asked now. Oh no, Gabriel or Collins? <sighs> I like both. I that's like a both. cop out. No, that's, it's not. That's a cop it's out. not. It's not. It's not a cop out. It's uh, you. This it's it's a musical <laughs> reference. <laughs> you know, you can appreciate. You know, the both the, um, and uh, you see. To be honest. I, I mean, if you listen to, you can hear the difference, but I don't. I don't know where Phil Collins when he originally sort of took over. I don't know where he tried to mimic him, but uh, some of them it's quite hard to tell, you know, mm. between the two of them, <coughs> um, especially in those sort of early recordings when he took over lead lead vocals. Okay. So that was mine. And do you have any? Um, do you have like a? record shop that you that's like your shop like you go a lot and like that's the place that you know that you'll find yourself no i i I get records from everywhere i've I've, i just go i mean like you see nowadays to get to get vinyl records there's increasingly there's loads of the shops are closing down they just oh really yeah oh yeah yeah i mean like just recently uh there was one in belfast uh i think called head uh which closed down, yeah, recently. So, That's so sad. Um, but yeah, <coughs> I go to charity shops. But again, with charity shops, what you tend to find is that uh, most any anything decent have been picked up. Either that, or they've cottoned on to the fact that the good ones that they do have are worth more than the one pound or the fifty p that they would have asked previously, and so they're they're building them up to yeah. five, six pound. Mm. So. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think where else, but yeah, um, we ha- they have record fairs every couple of months, you know, where there's, uh, they rent out a venue in Belfast, and all these different people who sell records come along there, so I treat myself and go and spend 40, 50 quid every couple of months, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's, it is an addiction sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> My name's PJ. I'm a record, <laughs> I'm a record collector. <laughs> oh dear. When did you reach rock bottom? <laughs> I'm ashamed My to vinyl say. habit. <laughs> I had a real up last week. Oh, yeah. I bought the ba- 
Batman so. soundtrack. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Well, people buy cigarettes, so it's just the money uh, that you don't spend on cigarettes that's available to you to buy all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Well, I did used to buy cigarettes <laughs> as well, but, <laughs> <laughs> but now you just... Um, <laughs> now we'll go to the uh, plug-in segment, so um, I'll, uh, there'll be a bit of a thing. So when uh, you hear me say France, you'll, uh, give the m- you'll say the microphone the place where you were born, the country. Oh. Northern Ireland? Yes, yeah, I'm not <laughs> saying it because I know that it's so confusing for French people like Northern Ireland, Ireland, uh, UK, GB. Like we say. So where you were born? <laughs> the Northern country. Ireland. Yeah, yeah. So okay, I, it's plug-in time. France, Northern Ireland, Scotland, England. Go go podcast rangers, mighty plug-in podcast rangers. Go go podcast rangers. Mighty plug-in podcast rangers. So, <laughs> PJ, uh, <laughs> where can our listeners uh, see you in anything or uh, play you're working on or <coughs> at the moment or you've done or whatever? Okay. Um, well, the c- uh, we I've just recently uh, finished making a short film. We just put in the last done the last edit. So that's called uh, Santa's Grotty. And we're going to try and put that out to some of the festivals and see if we can get accepted to that. Nice. It's not perfect, but it's my first first one, and I'm qu- quite pleased with it. I'll show you it after we finish here. And um, yeah, I, so yeah, I'm excited about that there. In, um, in what capacity are you involved? <coughs> I'm the. D- I was the director. Okay. Okay. Yep. Cool. 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 Um, we've. There's a couple of short films, but most of those, most of the stuff that I've been doing is for uh, education, you know, for people doing university or that there. So it's unlikely that people will see those there. Yeah. I have been in a short ad for the Adair Arms under the old fashioned, and I also do a voiceover. So if you look online, if you're searching for something to do with Balmina, there is a chance that a little ad will pop up <laughs> for the old fashioned. Um, which is uh, a drink, and it's uh, the old fashioned is the the title of the the ad, and it's for the Adair Arms in Ballymena. So you might he- you might see my my face on that there. Cool. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. nice. <coughs> and you have a website or contact that you website. want people to no, to be directed no, to? No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> that, okay. That's to come in the future. <laughs> when PJ does, we'll <laughs> leave it on the episode. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. I think uh, we're I think good. That'll be good. Uh, yeah. yeah. We'll just that'll make sure yeah. you don't leave uh, without um, signing the livre d'or, which is not golden, but they will do that after the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, yeah. doing a, I'm, a, I'm doing it, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> ah, beautiful. <laughs> yes. Oh dear. Um, we'll also while we Can we get a side by side of that, just them both doing <laughs> it at the same yeah. time. I'll, I'll get to work on that this evening. Doing we'll I'll take a picture of both of you tonight as well, <laughs> together. <laughs> bring bring the pen. Uh, and the uh, wish box, which we forgot to do with the... But they are successful massively already. Yes. Uh, the Bin Laden guys. Yeah, yeah, so the, the idea is um, you'll choose a wish, something you want in your career or um, to come to fruition. And we, we, won't wor- we won't read it at any point, except when you you know that it's completed, it happened, and then we'll bring you back and we'll, we'll open the envelope and uh, discuss uh, How it things. Went. No pressure, no, no pressure. <laughs> it be, be, be wax sealed. I've so never we been asked so many questions. <laughs> I saw, oh no. Sounds like he's in an interview. Yeah. <laughs> Did I get the job? <laughs> yes, you got the job. Uh, yeah. We won't uh. tell you anyway, so don't start <laughs> making movies, the films in your head like, oh yeah, well, I, will, I will work like this and there's... Yeah, it's not happening yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, the wig box and uh, oh, and the toddler roll now. And make sure to have that uh, for to you at some point because uh, PJ wasn't working and I forgot uh, to do it with pa- Patrick. And I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, I've actually it's in France now, but yeah, cool. I so think we're uh, actually good. All right, we're good. So yes, thanks for watching, listening. Yeah. Yeah, we are on Patreon. Usually, right now after this, you should have credits with uh, our patrons on it. But uh, we do still don't know uh, who, what everyone wants to be credited as. So uh, we don't have the, the credits today, but we'll have very soon. If you like what you hear, why don't you go have a look and see if there's anything that interests you? It's just a fun way of supporting us and bring being able to bring be us being able to bring you more exciting content. So yeah, you know. Patreon.com/slash. 
Good Bad Standard Podcast. Bye. 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 Shameless plug. Bye. <laughs>